our first meeting, uh, we reviewed the open space plan and its benchmark goals. And at the end of 2016, we created a pamphlet, uh, basically a strategy. And what that strategy outlined, um, so we could showcase the need to the co county commissioners, it made a case for why, why open space protection was important and why it was important now. York County was um, steadily increasing in population. We were losing farmland and um, had constant development pressure. That pamphlet also outlined our, our current state. Um, we had the 12% the of the county currently protected and also looked at challenges that we were facing. Less funding equal, equaled less um, acres being preserved. There was waiting lists for applicants in both the Ag Preserve Board list as well as getting conservation plans done by the Conservation District. Um, and we also looked at, at funding options as well. Uh, during that time, we reached out to different uh, counties across the, the state. Uh, Cumberland County, Chester County was, was definitely a help. Um, tried to see what they were doing. We also looked at funding options. We spent a lot of time, most of 2018 was spent looking at the Solid Waste Authority to see if we could use tipping fees to create some kind of dedicated fund. Those talks stalled out um, in about a year. We also looked at an open space bond. Um, we also looked at um, dedicated millage increase and Marcellus Shale funds. Um, so it wasn't until 2019 we met with Doug Wolfgang and just to see what other counties were doing around the state. And in February of 2019, we had a good conversation with the county commissioners and basically they said, if we can show that there's good public support for open space protection, they would be willing to take action. And so that's where we get into um, showcasing that public support. Uh, so I will turn it over to Ann. She's gonna cover the, the education and, and outreach, and then I'll, I'll cover the public opinion in detail. So Ann, if you'd like to cover our public education and outreach initiative, I'll turn it over to you. Certainly. Um, this slide here shows um, about this point last summer, our efforts really began. And it was a two-pronged effort. It was the public education outreach at the beginning part of the summer and the public polling toward the end of the summer. So this is to just show um, the two organizations that we contracted with to do the work for us. For our public education and outreach, we worked with the local advertising and marketing firm, Gavin. Um, their main goal was to increase the awareness and understanding of land preservation. What is open space? Why it should be protected? Is it important? And what can you do? Um, so I'm going to take the next couple minutes and talk to you about some of the work that we did with them. Um, and I will note that grant funding for this piece of our project came from the York County Community Foundation. Next. Like I said, the main purpose was to describe what is open space, why should it be protected, what can you do? So Gavin, their main deliverable for our whole campaign was this website that you see to the right of the slide. It's yorkopenspace.org. That became the home base of the campaign. That was where all of the information um, was posted. Uh, we put links to the different media that Gavin was able to provide for us on that, that became then the link for the survey and it will be the future home of the grant program, which we'll talk about later. But they, their campaign was really focused on using three personas of your county, the outdoor enthusiast, the lifelong Yorker, and looking at the quality of life in agriculture. This is a slide that shows some of the some of the metrics that were provided to us by Gavin. Um, Gavin created, with their professional expertise, static and animated graphics that we use on our social media platforms. Um, this campaign preceded the public survey, so we needed to get the message out in the best way that we could. We used Instagram and Facebook for our coordinated approach. Um, this show some of the information. The, the big number here is that 1,767 clicks were taken to complete the public education survey. 
but Gavin was able to use um, behavior targeting and digital ad networks, all of the types of media and marketing pieces that that made using that professional service really important to us. Those are things that we would not have been able to do just as a group of county organizations trying to get a social media campaign started. So as a result, we had over almost a million views of the company of the campaign messaging. So it was very, very effective. Next slide. This is actually a link to our County Planning Commission YouTube page, but it shows some of the um, media that was created by Gavin um, to show the message of open space protection from the aspect of being an outdoor enthusiast for protecting our quality of life, looking at agriculture. Um, I don't know that we have time in our presentation to click on any of those today, but I know that Katie will be sharing a full PDF version of the slideshow, so I would encourage you to take a look at some of those individual pieces that they did. They're very well done, they're professional, they're beautiful, and they present really great information. So next slide. So in addition to the work that was done with Gavin through our social media avenues, there were a lot of other efforts countywide. We made several presentations at your county commissioners meetings. Um, the departments and agencies that were involved with our partnership and friends of our partnership shared information in their, in their newsletters. Um, across the social media networks of all of those same departments and agencies, we had over 20,000 views of the information we shared from Gavin. Um, we were featured in a couple of local newspaper articles um, ABC News, Set 27, and CBS 21 featured stories on the, on the project. We had buy-in from a lot of our local community partners, which are listed. Another great thing that we were able to do is featured here on this slide. It's the um, article that we featured in Our York Media. Our York Media is known, they call themselves the Good News Outlet of York. It is a newsletter that's by free subscription and we were able to have our program featured in an article, and it was focused on protecting the rural character. Julie Flinchbaugh of Flinchbaugh Orchards and Tammy Clunk, the director of the York County Parks, talked about the benefits of open space in terms of agricultural production and agro-entertainment agro in terms of Flinchbaugh's orchard and countywide recreational opportunities through the county parks. Another excellent um, piece and probably the cornerstone of our campaign was a video that was prepared by White Rose Community TV. And wait, if you want to advance to the next slide and perhaps show the video, this really, um, this is the message of our campaign. It looks at open space preservation and protection in terms of our farmers, our outdoorsmen, our people who like to recreate outside. So. If you'll indulge us, the video is about eight minutes long, but it really just sends home the message of why this was an important issue to the county and how we were able to get public support behind it. Okay, I will share that. I'm gonna have to temporarily stop my screen share so I can include the audio in there. So I will, that should not take long. No problem, Wade. Uh, this is Katie. Anne, um, what do you think was like the most important piece of this? Like, what do you think really made it all click into place as you had been working on it for so long? I think we were at a perfect storm of the looking at our county in terms of development and pressures from development, looking at um, how everyone has their own idea of open space, why it's important to them. If you like to fish, if you like, if your children like to play soccer, if you're in a family farm, um, all of those aspects of open space are very important. And we were at the very, very critical point in our county's history where we had county commissioners who also felt that was a very important and um, very important item that was, value valuable to the community and deserving of their attention and their action and so it was sort of just a whole a combination of a lot of different things and it really can be attributed to the complete perseverance of our committee as well so 
it was just a perfect storm of all of these things coming together. If it was just one of those things, it likely wouldn't have gathered the steam that it did, but it really was just the compilation of all of those things. Yeah, and it sounds like you guys were ready for the opportunity when it came about. Yes. That's great. <laughs> We've Thank always you. been ready, so this is fantastic. <laughs> so I think Wade might be ready here for it. Yep, I will, uh, if you have volume on your computer, you might want to turn that up. Uh, we tested it out the other day to try and make sure it wasn't real choppy. So we'll, we'll go ahead and play it. It is about eight minutes long, and then we'll return to the presentation. A peaceful stream, the woods, rolling fields, a park. We all have a favorite image of open space. But is open space important to you? Is enough being done to protect open space? Open space comes in different forms and provides many benefits. It promotes your good health and provides places for you to enjoy being outdoors. It helps keep our air and water clean and preserves our county's rich agricultural heritage. Open space in York County ensures you have recreational places to have fun. Open spaces secure natural and historic areas from development and sustain a wonderful quality of life for you and your family. One type of open space that is important to protect is our farmland. This type of open space features agricultural lands that are privately owned and managed for food and fiber production. Some examples of agricultural open space include cropland, pasture, livestock operations, and orchards. Currently, there are just over 2,000 farms encompassing about 250,000 acres in York County. To date, only 17% of our farmland is protected from development through preservation efforts. Here are a few highlights of why these are important. Agriculture is an important part of the local economy. The market value of agricultural products sold in your county each year total more than $260 million. Farmers today are only 2% of every community, feeding the other 98%. Protecting this open space provides incentives for farmers to remain in the agricultural industry and for young farmers to join the industry. Farms pay property taxes which contribute to every community's tax base. But compared to residential development, farms require very little in costly public services. Farms and farm markets provide easy access to fresh local food. And preserving agricultural land helps to protect pristine view sheds for the entire community. York County spans over a half a million acres, but only 12% of York County is protected as open space. The county comprehensive plan wants to protect 2,500 acres each year from development. That's only four-tenths of one percent annually. That goal has not been reached in over 10 years, back to 2009. It's not because we don't have open space. In fact, over 85,000 acres of open space are actually available for protection. At issue, not enough money is available to buy and preserve open space. Another important type of open space to protect is land or water that is dedicated to active or passive recreation. Some examples of recreational open space include community parks, state parks, such as Cadoris, Gifford Pinchot, San Luis, and county parks like Yamaraki Ridge, the Rail Trail, and right here, William Kane County Park behind me. Established in 1977, William Kane County Park is a partnership between the York Water Company and the York County Parks Department. This facility provides over 1,600 acres for recreational opportunities, includes two lakes with over 2 billion gallons of water, and are popular for fishermen, non-motorized boats, and also over 12 miles of hiking trails. It also plays an important role in maintaining a safe drinking water supply for almost a quarter million people in the greater York area. In 2018, the York County Park System alone experienced over 1.25 million visitors. Parks provide amenities including sports fields, playground equipment, hiking and biking trails, as well as other opportunities to promote good health and exercise for people of all ages. Parks also provide areas for our children to explore and learn about nature. 
One example is the popular Nature Center at Nixon County Park. Parks and recreational facilities support the local economy by attracting people to the area. When looking at a location, businesses recognize that finding areas with abundant recreational opportunities is an important factor in attracting and retaining talented employees. In addition to the 1,600-acre uh, park protecting our two lakes, the York Water Company uh, doesn't look 10 or 20 or even 50 years down the road. We look 100 or 200 years down the road to protect our water supply, again, for over a quarter million people. So we want to preserve and protect land as far away as uh, Stortstown and Glen Rock, all parts of York County that are the source of these two lakes that are behind me and the source of drinking water for our community, not just today, but again, 200 years into the future. York County's location and closeness to major highways and interstates makes it a great place to live and work. The York County Economic Alliance says York Countyans are just a day's drive from 40% of the U.S. population and 60% of Canada's population. Because it's so easy to hit the road from York County, many of you live here and the businesses you use strategically build here. But the challenge is development. York County is ideal for commuters, yet development takes away precious open space. Another type of open space that is important to protect are natural areas. Natural areas include the landscape of physical and biological features that are predominantly in a natural state, not impacted by human intervention. Natural areas can protect the existing ecological community and resources like trees, wildlife habitats, soil and water, as well as geologic and historic features. Some examples of open space features are woodlands, wildlife habitats, streams, steep slopes, floodplains, and wetlands. Here are a few examples of why natural areas are important. Woodland areas keep waterways cooler and helps maintain water quality and stream health. Cooler water is necessary to maintain certain fish populations like wild trout. Conserving land along streams and other drinking water sources prevents pollution. Protecting steep slopes, floodplains, and wetlands allows Mother Nature to retain and filter water before it enters our waterways. This decreases stream flow after rain events and reduces pollution entering our waterways. Protecting larger, contiguous blocks of natural area landscapes can also provide critical corridors for wildlife movement. And protecting natural areas can provide a place for young and old to enjoy nature. People enjoy observing wildlife, hunting, fishing, hiking, and other recreational opportunities these areas offer. The county comprehensive plan marks areas best suited for growth and development. It also emphasizes protecting natural resources. Protecting our natural resources is vital for you now and for your children to raise their children right here as they learn to be good stewards of the land around them. That was a great video. <laughs> All right, yeah, hopefully everybody could, could see that and hear it okay. Um, like Ann said, Katie will be sending out links to the video. So if it didn't come across too well, you should be able to um, um, look that up on, on your own time. Uh, Ann, did you have anything else to add for the education and outreach? I didn't. I, I, guess I say I didn't, but I guess I do. I, really, we, we use the coordinated efforts of all of our networks with the professional and um, perfect services of Gavin to create a campaign that really got the message out to our community and I think really made a difference. So um, it, it was just a, it was a pleasure to work with that firm. It was a pleasure to get the message out. And I think that we had a very good outcome as a result. Yeah, and, and the the purpose was twofold. One was to educate the public prior to the survey, and then the other one was to get the survey out to the public. Um, but we're very thankful for the community members, the farmers, the local uh, White Rose Television, 
um, there was a lot of folks that came together and, and helped help support this and pull together this effort. Uh, so that, that leads into the, the second half, the public opinion survey. Um, and just to give a little background about that, when we were looking at doing a public opinion survey, we wanted a third party so that it, it wasn't going to be skewed by county staff um, completing the survey. So we looked at a variety of, of partners. Uh, we, we spoke with Shippensburg Center for Land Use. I know they did a survey for Cumberland County. We also looked at Penn State Harrisburg and York College. Uh, we ended up going with York College. Um, all three were, were pretty even. The edge for York College, we thought, because it is in York County, we thought it would be recognizable to most everybody that lives in the county, and they might have a certain level of trust if they receive a survey in the mail from, from York College. So we ended up going with them. Uh, we were able to get a grant from the York County Community Foundation to cover most of it. Um, we also, the county commissioners also kicked in some funding to help with both the public polling survey and extra costs with the education and outreach. Uh, the committee, York College uh, developed and ran the survey, but the committee worked very closely with York College to kind of get the survey set up with, with questions to make sure we were getting all the information we wanted from a survey. Uh, the way it was sent out, <clears throat> When we spoke with the commissioners, we wanted a survey that was a random sample of the county. Um, and we also wanted to see what the super voters uh, were saying. Um, but we also wanted to get it out to as many people as we could. So we set up a, a two-tier approach for a survey. Tier one, we sent out, it was a randomized sample survey. Uh, to get a validated survey, York College knew how many uh, surveys they would need back to, to accomplish that. We sent out 1,500 surveys randomly throughout the county um, from a total of 160,000 households. We were able to uh, receive 450 valid survey responses. That's about a 30% survey response rate. And basically what your college did, they sent out, this started in, I think, July 25th, they mailed the first round out. Um, they put in a $2 bill just to help incentivize. Um, and after two weeks, they, from the folks they didn't hear back from, they sent out another, another round. Two weeks after that, they sent out a third round. And that's how we were able to get the 450 responses. Uh, we also wanted to uh, get it out to as many people as we could. We did not want that competing with the random sample. Um, so we waited about four weeks. Uh, August 16th is when we, we our voluntary uh, survey went live. Uh, we hosted it on our yorkopenspace.org website. We emailed it out to as many groups that we could. We emailed it out to all the municipalities, a lot of them pushed it out in their newsletters or put it on their website. Uh, Gavin uh, pushed it out through their social media sites. Uh, we worked with the local farm markets, kind of the same partners that we used to get the word out. We worked with, with that same network to uh, get the survey out to as many people as we could. From that supplemental survey, we were able to get 1,750 more valid survey responses. So if you combine the two groups, it was over 2,200 valid, valid survey responses that we were able to get. Uh, the survey itself, uh, the information that was in the survey and the full survey report is on our yorkopenspace.org website if you'd like to see that. But the survey consisted of eight introduction or demographic questions asking about their age, how long they live in York County, did they rent or own a house, did they have any children, what their occupation was, um, were they registered to vote, did they vote in the last election, how they learned about the survey. Uh, the meat of the survey, the information that we wanted, asked about um, do you visit open space, and if so, how often do you visit open space, how important is open space protection to you, and do you think it's important to all age groups, kids, up through seniors, are you concerned about losing open space, 
Um, how much open space did they think should be protected? Did they agree with our 2,500 acres per year benchmark? Um, should the county identify a dedicated funding stream and how much would they be willing to pay? And on the slide, you can see some of the key findings came back um, overwhelmingly in support of open space protection. Uh, over 75% viewed open space as important. 90% said open space was valuable for future generations. Over 60% responded that they should identify funding. There was even uh, a certain percentage that was neutral either way. There was only, I think, 10 or 15% that um, said there should not be a dedicated fund. Um, over 75% were willing to contribute additional tax dollars and the, the amount, the average amount they were willing to contribute was $11 annually to protect open space. Um, and I wanted to show you the, the tier one versus the tier two versus the super voter results. Uh, the, the gray is the overall results. The orange is the tier one random sample results and the blue is the super voter results. So there are some differences, but overall they were pretty much on the same, same wavelength. Everybody, uh, there wasn't much difference between the overall results and the, the random sample. So using these results, um, the county commissioners uh, figured that that was enough support for them to take action. Uh, in November of 2019, they took two big action items. One, they created a resolution that formalized the York County Land Preservation Committee. And, and they also gave that committee the responsibility to develop and implement programs to identify, qualify, and preserve open space and agricultural land through the program known as the York County Open Space and Land Preservation Program. To back that up, they also dedicated funding. They dedicated uh, one tenth of a mill in the York County's budget every year that would be dedicated to this land preservation program. Of that tenth of a mill, nine one hundredth of a mill would be used for agricultural preservation easements, natural land, the purchase of natural land easements. Um, there would be funding for the county parks to put in their reserve fund. Currently, the county parks stated they aren't interested in in creating new parks, but they're very interested in adding on to existing parks. So this would give them the ability to create a reserve fund so as opportunities come up, they are able to jump on them and purchase those lands. And there's also funding about $350,000 that will be available starting this year that will go towards an open space grants program for nonprofits and municipalities to both purchase land for recreation and open space and also uh, some of that money can be used for planning and ordinance assistance to help support, make their documents and ordinances more supportive of open space. With the extra Wait. funding, we realized, we realized we needed extra funding for staffing as well. So one hundredth of a mill would go towards staffing the, um, for someone at the conservation district to help with the backlog of, of conservation plans. Both the County Ag Preserve Board and Farm and Natural Lands Trust would receive funding for staffing to help with the, the additional work. And the Planning Commission is acting as the program administrator to facilitate the meetings and facilitate the grants programs and those, those types of things. Um, so with that additional funding, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to first to Patty McCandless to hear from her how this additional funding um, she sees it helping out her program, and then after that, we'll follow up with Sean Kenny to see how this additional and dedicated funding will help their program. So, Patty, you want to take a couple minutes? Okay, thank you very much, Wayne, Wade, and Ann, and Katie, for uh, allowing us to be a part of your partnership here today uh, seminar. Um, Katie, you did ask a question. What were one of the keys there to how this all um, became a success? And and Anne did a great job answering it, but I also wanted to say is, I think the public will was at that moment um, there and also the persistence of the group. I think Anne nailed it on the head. Also, we had a unique situation finding Mark Durr, who was the county administrator um, at that time and continues. And I think his continual um, support of 
the Land Protection Committee's efforts. He, to me, was very influential. And if you can find someone within your commissioner's office or someone inf influential to your commissioners, find that person. Because I think that, to me, was one of the, the keys as well. Um, open space and land protection has been a focus of the York County Ag Land Preserve Board in the County of York actually since 1989, the first year of our agency's funding. This was in response to the passage of Act 149, which was the Farmland Preservation Act. You may recall the approval of a $100 million bond by Pennsylvania voters back in the late 80s. Since our county program's approval on August the 15th, 1990, by the Pennsylvania Ag Land Preservation Board, interest in preservation in York County has never been the problem. It's been limited funding. We have received a steady stream of applications from landowners every year since the summer of 1990. Um, this year alone, 2020, we received 64 applications on over just over 5,700 acres of farmland we found that 50 applications actually qualified for our program. That was about 4,700 acres. With the funding that we were allocated originally for 2020, uh, the York County Commissioners uh, allocated 1.388 million for our 2020 efforts. This is from that one-tenth of a mil. To that uh, county amount, the state allocated just over $3 million. So we were looking at $4.388 million um, at the beginning of this year. We estimated at about $2,800 per acre is right now what our conservation easement value is per acre for these working farms. We had estimated that we could preserve about 1,567 acres. Now, we're still on hold now with um, the pandemic. So on June the 11th, the State Ag Land Preservation Board will meet and they're going to review their spending threshold. It went from an original $43 million set in February. After the pandemic hit, it was reduced to 38 million. So every county in Pennsylvania, we have about 58 counties that participate in the state's farmland preservation program, we're all waiting to hear um, what that new funding will be and what we'll actually be able to accomplish. The other thing that we are doing with the funding is we are looking to um, include another uh, position in our office and that will be someone who will monitor the easements for us. Uh, let's see. Let's look at some of the GIS analysis that our agency has done. Um, in August the 7th, 2019, our, our agency looked at acres in York County. Total acres are about 583,000 acres. The acres enrolled in ag security area are about 178,000. So that's about 31% of the county. Those are the lands that are eligible to participate in the conservation easement purchase program. Acres enrolled in ag security area that are not preserved, not in a growth area, are about 115,000 acres. That's about 20% of the county. Then we looked at acres enrolled in an ag security area that are not preserved, they're not in a growth area, and they're 50 acres or more. That was about 80,000 acres. So there's about 14% of the county that we felt we could also consider for preservation. Acres enrolled in ag security area that are not preserved, they're not in a growth area, but are 50 acres or more, and more than 50% of those soils would qualify for our program, is down to about 72,000 acres. So actually, when we looked at what was available in York for easement um, purchase protection, we're down around 12%. So um, with this dedicated source of funding, um, we're hoping that it will be a long-term um, effort and we hope to preserve as much land as the uh, landowners would like to offer to our program. 
Um, when we talk about strategies to wisely use these funds or to um, stretch them as far as we can, because they're such a limited resource, some of the strategies we've used is we've encouraged the exclusion of lands like woodlands, steep slopes, stream quarters that do not qualify for our program, and we encourage the landowners to preserve and protect those farms through our Farm and Natural Lands Trust, our partner here in the county. Oftentimes, our program can preserve the cropland while the um, Farm and Natural Lands can preserve the um, woodland, steep slopes, and open space. And in the year that the landowner gets his easement dollars, he can also claim a charitable deduction, thereby keeping more of his uh, dollars in his pocket. Another thing we do to stretch our dollars is we do bargain sales. In the Ag Preserve Office, we only offer 90% of that easement value. The landowner can claim 10% of that value, again, as a charitable donation, if he would like. The other thing we do is we have caps. York County has had a cap for many years. Uh, recently, we did reduce the cap down to $3,000 per acre that we would spend on a, a farm per acre. The other thing is in our LISA system, our land evaluation site assessment system, our selection tool will give points to farms that are located in municipalities that have effective ag zoning ordinances, those ag protection zoning ordinances that basically protect large contiguous tracts of farmland. Those are the communities that we want to purchase our easements within. So we give priority points to those um, applications in those communities. Um, another strategy within our ranking system is we give priority points to farms located outside of the growth boundary. Um, we discourage preserving farms through easement purchase inside a growth boundary because we believe our program is trying to balance the uh, growth planning with ag uh, production planning. Therefore, we want to encourage purchasing easements in the most rural areas of York County. Um, growth is necessary. Hey, Excuse me, Patty. Yes. Sorry, I, just to, just to be mindful of time frame, um, we'll have to soon. Can you maybe like thirty more seconds to wrap up, and then we'll tra change it to uh, Sean. Sure. Yep. Thank so, you. To, so to date, we have um, used in York County seventy nine million dollars to preserve. 43,566 acres. And on June the 11th, we'll be um, seeing the approval of our 290th farm. So York is very committed to farmland preservation and we are so thankful for the work of York County's Land Protection Committee. Thank you. All right, thank you, Patty. Sean, are you available to, to tell how this funding will help your program? Uh, Katie, I don't know if you can see Sean, if he's a, a participant. Yes, I am. Actually, you have that power at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. That's scary. Yeah, so uh, click attendees. Okay. Yep, yep, Sean, more. Can you, can you hear me? There you go. Promote to panelists. Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, uh, thanks for having me. My name's Sean Kenny. I'm the Executive Director of Farm and Natural Lands Trust. Um, our organization has been around since 1990. Uh, we were founded as the York County Farm Land Trust and uh, we were kind of modeled after the Lancaster Farm Land Trust, but you know, Lancaster is a much different uh, topography than York. We have a lot of farms that are very productive, but also have some very uh, strong woodlands and streams. So about five years later, we were changed to Farm and Natural Lands Trust of York County. And so far, we've decided that name is long enough. <laughs> um, so we have, uh, since that time, we've preserved uh, over 12,000 acres on about 145 properties. And 90% uh, of those farms and, and natural lands and uh, are, 
our uh, donated easements. And that's the way we worked for roughly the first 20 years. And then we started to see some funding to, to actually pay landowners a portion of the easement value on their property. And uh, of that 12,000 acres, I would say about half is, uh, you know, what we would call productive land. And then the other half is more, more natural setting, whether it's uh, woodlands or streams and uh, wetlands, things like that. Um, we do uh, large size properties that are all woods. Uh, and then we do some that don't have any woods at all. So uh, when we got this uh, funding commitment last year, that made it very comfortable for us to not have to go back and essentially start from scratch every year or every few years to try to get some funding to pay landowners because while donated easements are great, they're, they're a difficult sell. There's, there's uh, what we're able to offer now, we're averaging about $500 an acre of a payment to landowners. And uh, Patty talked about easement values. So using round figures, if you have a 100 acre property and uh, it's worth a million dollars on the market, and you would put an easement on that says on that 100 acres, you have a, an existing house and then you have the ability to say subdivide off a 30 acre parcel or more with an additional building right. In addition to the payment that we would give you a $50,000, you would have a balance of an easement value that you could claim as a charitable deduction because we are a qualified land trust that can take that donation. And those donations vary uh, just like any other home sale or property sale. There's a lot of variables there, uh, but usually the landowners get a nice size balance of, uh, of a charitable deduction that they can spread over time. <clears throat> so uh, we are currently uh, waiting on one application to come in. And if we get this application, it's for a hundred acre property. Uh, we have allocated uh, the 450000 that we have to use this year. We're, we're putting a pause on uh, any additional applicants for 2020 because uh, with the COVID-19 and all that was going on, we, we stopped our fundraising, we stopped our special events, and we were able to kind of work directly with some landowners that we've been in conversations with for some time. So our goal now with the funding that we have is to hit a thousand acres a year uh, preserved. And uh, this year we're well on our way to that because we still do occasionally get some donated easements. And this year uh, we'll have over uh, two properties, about 550 acres in donated easements thus far. And uh, now we're getting some interest as well for next year for uh, properties that we can start on this year. But work on them next year. So um, our process is right now, it's a, we have a ranking scale, it's a 10 point scale. You've gotta be over 30 acres. Uh, it's a mix of uh, forest canopy, quality ag soils, wetlands, waterways, uh, steep slopes, uh, unique features, uh, PNDI hits uh, for you know environmentally sensitive areas. Uh, so we have an, a pretty easy ranking scale that we work from and, and we've had a lot of great help from the uh, County Planning Commission and Wade to help us through GIS to be able to uh, rank properties and also get a lot of education so we can we can do a lot of that work in house as well. So uh, Thus far, I think we've preserved five properties this year, and we probably have another five that we're working on, and then all the ones that we'll be working on beyond that for next year or additional donated easements. So the funding has been great for us. Uh, we really work hard on building strong relationships, and uh, like Patty had said, Mark Durr in the uh, county planning, or the, or the county mm -hmm. administration office, and then also being in good terms with the county commissioners and, and really just doing great projects and great work. It's been, uh, it's been really great. And I'll, I'll also say that the relationship with the county planning commission, you know, what we do goes in tune with uh, their open space and greenways plans and their master planning for the county of growth areas and everything like that. So we're, we're out there kind of firming up zoning and firming up different things through these easements because they are, perpetual and they carry over uh, through future landowners as well. So um, wow. I don't know if that covers my time, but I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Sean. Yes, this is Katie Hess again. Um, we have met our, our time threshold for this presentation, um, but there were two questions that I'd, I'd like to cover as quickly as possible so that we can give our other speakers the time that we promised them. Um, those two questions are, um, first, Cliff asked, what is a super voter? That was something that was discussed by Wade. Uh, Wade, could you just briefly describe what that means? Yeah, I believe there's there could be a couple of different definitions. The definition that we used, I think, from our voter registration office, a super voter was somebody that voted in the last four, I think, um, fall elections, four consecutive uh, elections, was That's considered right. a super voter. That's right. Thank you. And. Um, Another individual wanted to ask, do you think that this would have been as visible if the threat from trans source was not going on? Was that at play at all? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think those were too, it didn't hurt. Um, I think uh, the warehousing along I-83, the warehouses popping up, I think between that and some of the development, um, now we use some of the, the trans source, we made some connections with some of the farmers to help get the word out and help with the videos. But I don't know, like I said, it didn't hurt, but I don't know how much of a factor the trans source was. I think- But they, I, I do know that the warehousing along I-83 is very visible and has been in the paper. And I, I know people are concerned about that type of development. I think the York County Planning Commission got a lot of goodwill by supporting the uh, landowners who were in opposition to the trans source because the Planning Commission really um, supported strongly those private landowners fight. So there was a lot of positives that came out of that um, mm -hmm. effort. And I, I think the Planning Commission was viewed as a huge help in that battle, which the mm -hmm. landowners did win and as it turned out, they had to put the uh, power lines on existing um, right of ways versus condemning all of those uh, preserved and uh, other farms in the region. So kudos to the York County Planning Commission. You did a great job on that effort. Yeah, thank you very much, Patty. And thank you um, all. It sounds like a fantastic, strategic, ongoing, concerted effort um, by all of the various conservation and preservation organizations in your county. And I just wanna thank you for your work and acknowledge um, the strategy that you deployed over the past decade or more in being ready to take advantage of that opportunity. So um, with that, I'm going to ask Wade to make me the host once again. Uh, do you know, is that just a stop share or? Hover up. Yeah, you can do it that way too. Make host. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, we have with us the Dillsburg Heart and Soul Project. I believe that we have um, Heidi Tucker and Lindsay Varner with us. Um, ladies, I'll ask you to start your video if that's okay with you and unmute yourselves. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, Isaac. <laughs> Isaac's there too. Heidi was here a second ago and then child things just happened. So sure. she was really back. Sure, yeah. So maybe a brief introduction of you personally and what you're doing with the Heart and Soul Project and um, how it's going. Yeah, so uh, we're the Tuckers, Isaac and Heidi and uh, our foster son Xavier on here. Um, we, uh, we have been working in Dillsburg uh, for a long time trying to make some different changes. I sit on Borough Council here. Um, we've been 
very much a part of the farmer's market and various roles. And um, we've always felt that our community needed some uh, cohesion, I guess, or, or uh, vision and planning uh, to sort of bring our community together um, to be able to live, work, and play. And um, there wasn't, there, there hasn't seemed to be a, a very good uh, way of doing that. And when we heard about uh, the Heart and Soul Project, we jumped at the opportunity to be a part of it. And, um, and so, yes, uh, we're very thankful uh, for being here and, and uh, thank you for getting us this far. Uh, the Southland Partnership has played a huge role in this, and um, we're excited to have Lindsay as our coach, who, uh, Lindsay, um, I'm sure a lot of you know her, um, because she um, was, was the uh, project manager of the Community Heart and Soul in Carlisle, and now Mount Holly Springs. And um, so our current phase, um, by now we would have liked to have had a uh, town hall meeting um, introducing the project and really getting um, the town uh, in, uh, behind uh, what was what was happening, um, but that has been a little bit slower with with COVID. Um, but we are making progress, and we've uh, we've successfully built our leadership team. Um, we have about six of us, and um, and then a handful of volunteers who are ready to start canvassing when we when we start to get to the next uh, phase. So uh, first, you know, there's four phases of the Heart and Soul Project. And um, the first phase is really just the Imagine part, um, which, which the Orton Family Foundation really outlines as, you know, kind of dreaming big and figuring out, okay, well, who is our town? How should we go about asking uh, and collecting these stories that were uh, we'll eventually be collecting in phase two um, and and really kind of dreaming as far as um, how are we going to uh, do the best we possibly can with the resources available to us as a team. So I don't know if uh, you have something to add, but that's all I have. Um, yeah, I guess, like Isaac said, we were really excited when we heard about Heart and Soul. We liked the concept of, I think, one of the things we hope to come out of it, even though the Heart and Soul Project, like you're not supposed to have any preconceived ideas as to what the outcomes will be. It's more just about yeah. like getting your town stories and getting everyone kind of on the same page and realizing that you have more in common than you have different to try and figure out what are, what are the things we have in common, what are our core, core community values. But one of the things that excited us about it is bringing people together, making those connections that we do have a lot of, like if you live in Dillsburg, you live in Dillsburg for a reason, and we certainly have some things in common. And um, we're excited to get this information so that the nonprofits in our town, the governments in our area, the um, businesses can all make more educated um can all make more educated decisions about how they use their resources. Because being from a small town, we have limited resources um, and we wanna make sure that everyone's using them effectively so that we're making a plan um, and that we're making informed decisions. Right, thank you so much, Heidi. And yeah, oh, um, I'm going to put my video on. <laughs> um, thanks, Heidi. And you really hit the nail on the head. Heart and Soul is all about understanding what community members value about their place and then transitioning that understanding into you know borough initiatives you know land use planning reflecting that in the policies that shape um, the landscape you know is why we're interested in it and um, Lindsay I don't know if you have anything to add yeah, I think that yeah, heart and soul is a it, just as you said, it's an opportunity to to bring people together um, to start to look at you know what is important to members of the community and the decision makers can use that to really make smart choices for the residents of the region. 
Um, so this is a, a great opportunity for the Dillsburg area, and, um, and I'm really looking forward to working with them and working with the organizations in the region um, to move their heart and soul project forward. Um, Carlisle was a pilot town, and we learned a lot from Carlisle, um, and we're looking forward to applying um, what the Orton Family Foundation um, had Pennsylvania Humanities Council have really developed um, for our towns in PA. So it's, it's really exciting to, to see what's growing in Dillsburg and what they've been able to do um, virtually. Heart and Soul is very much one-on-one, -on -one, person to person um, type of activity um, and everything has gone virtual. Um, so they have done a fantastic job of keeping this process moving um, through phone calls and Zoom. So it's, I look forward to seeing what comes next and um, how we move into the next phase of Heart and Soul there. Thanks. Uh, I think there was a question. Um, someone wants to know, are you working with Dill's Tavern? Um, we don't have anyone specifically from Nine Chaps, hey. which is Nine Chaps is Northern New York County Historic and Preservation Hi, Society. And those are, that's the organization that manages Dill's Tavern. Um, we currently don't have anyone on our board specifically from them, but I mean, it's definitely gonna be a point of interest in our town. So I'm sure it'll come up in the data collection. And also the farmer's market has recently moved to Dill's Tavern. Um, so it'll, it'll definitely be a place where we uh, collect data from people there. Um, yeah, it's definitely a strong, it's an asset to our town. And I'm sure yeah. it'll, I'm sure it'll come out in the process. Thanks. And um, for, for others who might be struggling to connect with their communities, you know, as they're trying to build teams or keep initiatives moving through COVID when we can't meet in person, can you speak a little bit to how you're overcoming those challenges right now? Well, uh, I think one of the one of the biggest things is just talk. Like anyone that we run into, even though like you're just going to the grocery store once a week, or you're you know, or you're doing you know your other work, we've definitely been sharing about heart and soul. With it comes up like when we're talking about to family members, to friends. Um, and for us, it really accelerated when we, um, I have a, a business, a bakery business that I set up at the farmer's markets. So when farmer's markets at the beginning of May started, um, it was just a connection point for people. So we'd see people in person, anyone we saw like in person or even just walking around our town, we would talk to them about the project and try to get more people interested so yeah, just take every opportunity you can to, to share about whatever, whatever you're trying to get done. Thanks, Heidi. Any closing thoughts? I don't think so. <laughs> thanks, Lindsay? No, thanks, Katie, for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Heart and Soul. Yeah, and, and thanks to all of you because you know, just like with our structure as a South Mountain Partnership, we rely on the volunteer work of all of our committee members. And, you know, Heidi and Isaac have done the work to engage their local community and build out their leadership team. And that's what it's all about, like Heidi said, is creating the connections and just rolling up your sleeves and getting to work. So it's pretty inspiring. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So next, we're talking with David Maher. He is the, the local advocate for the South Mountain Trolley Greenway Rail Trail. That would, once again, if built, connect downtown Dillsburg to downtown Mechanicsburg. Dave, are you ready are you available i think you have yes. a couple of slides right i do okay, okay. so do <laughs> do you can i just hit are, share screen no but i'm are you not able no okay i'm going to make you the host temporarily and then you will have that ability okay.
Okay. Does everybody, everybody see that? <laughs> yep. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as Katie mentioned, my name is David Maher. I'm a local Cumberland County trail uh, revitalization advocate, agitator, uh, whatever you want to call me. <clears throat> um, and at first I thought I had five minutes, but now I have 10 minutes. So maybe I'll either talk slower or faster with more information. So I'll figure that out in a minute here. But um, for those of you who aren't familiar, the South Mountain Trolley Greenway is a, is a proposed rail trail. Uh, that could one day uh, connect towns of Mechanicsburg and Dillsburg. Um, it would run potentially along the historic Dillsburg branch of the Cumberland Valley Railroad, um, which was a rail line that ran, operated from around 1872 to oh, around 1980 or so, the tracks were torn up. Um, and would run potentially through the Cumberland County communities of uh, Mechanicsburg Borough, a little bit of Silver Spring Township and Monroe Township. And then once it crosses the Yellow Breaches here in this photograph, uh, it would enter Carroll Township in Northern York and then uh, make its way into Dillsburg Borough. <clears throat> uh, this photo, as I mentioned, is the, is the historic crossing of that rail line um, over the Yellow Breaches uh, this photo, you're standing on the Cumberland County shore looking over at, oh, actually, this is all Cumberland County uh, at this point, but uh, you're, you're standing on the northern shore looking into the old Williams Grove Amusement Park. You can see the, the, the remains of the, the cyclone roller coaster there um, is, is still, still standing. And really, I, I, I always felt that this was a, kind of a, a the postcard shot for, for the, the trail, either, either now or in, in the future, potentially. Um, it's just, uh, it's got such a great overlap of natural and, and, and cultural resource uh, um, interest uh, for cultural trail users um, and marketability too. So it's just, just a great shot. And you can see it also uh, highlights some of the issues that the trail would have in terms of um, maintaining and repairing some of the older railroad infrastructure. But not impossible, just a little, little difficult. <clears throat> so over the last year. I mean, we've been actually starting, started this in 2016, but uh, over the course of 2019, we were able to raise uh, state and local funds to begin a feasibility study uh, to look at um, the feasibility of this trail. Uh, it, had, it had been an idea that was on the books for, for decades. Um, it had been in different planning documents, um, but I think because there were so many unknowns about whether this rail line was ever a fully abandoned and uh, who owned the right of way and uh, it's two counties and five municipalities it seemed overly complicated with reserve farms <clears throat> there was a lot of not not willing to kind of go near it at least for for a good while so um uh, i guess enter me as an insane person and i i just kind of kept nudging and kept asking questions of some of the other trail groups in the area see if they have ever thought about this or if anybody's ever Kind of thought about this um, interesting idea, um, especially because it could connect. It's a good short, you know, afternoon uh, day trip, um, but it would connect to uh, downtown, historic, walkable downtown communities uh, in two different counties that are at different stages or different goals of revitalization to try to attract people to their downtowns. Um, and, and rail trails <clears throat> nationwide, uh, world, worldwide, have really shown. Uh, power to, to really ramp up foot traffic in, in communities for, for local businesses and can spark local businesses, trail related businesses. Um, I can really see that out west in the Great Allegheny Passage uh, Trail Network in Western Pennsylvania. That's really salvaged a lot of those old um, coal and steel towns that were really dead in the water until that, that trail came along. And even in the rural parts in the middle, um, there are farm and ag related businesses that could easily take advantage of uh, trail users uh, getting off on short little uh, trail sidings, I've been trying to call them um, either to Ashcombs or Oak Grove or even the Cold Springs Brewery, the new brewery that opened up right on the Yellow Breaches about, I think just, it's just under a half mile from where this trail would cross from that photograph I just showed you. So there's a lot of exciting potential um, to, to highlight the local businesses, the local landscapes, um, the preserved farms, the, the, the active farms, um, and then the, the 
the downtown small businesses. This, um, so we worked with Silver Spring Township over 2019 as our municipal lead to manage uh, a phase one uh, feasibility study, which really looked at um, what is the, who owns, what is the line of abandonment? who owns the corridor, um, specifically the historic corridor. We, we focused on that initially and then looked at other potential routes to connect these two communities or through these five communities. <clears throat> and uh, we hired Bukhart Horn of a firm out of York uh, and uh, they helped us develop this sort of phase 1A uh, feasibility study. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and you can see in this first map here, um, the line is shown <clears throat> as the dashed uh, line in the center. And then it, we were looking at, well, how many people locally could potentially take advantage of this trail? And you can see just within a five mile radius, there's over 100, almost 140,000 people that live um, you know, real close to this, this trail. And, and uh, you really wanted to, to, to highlight that because up until recently, uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation Natural Resources had identified Northern York as a, a trail gap area. There was a redefinition of, of what trail gap is, but for a time, Northern York um, particularly was identified as that, as a, as a trail desert. Um, and, and Eastern Cumberland County too has been attempting to try to develop trails and trail systems and networks. Um, so these two places are really, um, are the, the, the residents there are arguably starving for, for trail access. <clears throat> this is a little uh, more zoomed in approach. Um, and then so we, we chopped up the study of the line into three segments uh, to kind of make it more swallowable, palatable to kind of study, uh, of course, the York segment, the Monroe Township segment, and then the Trindle Spring or Mechanicsburg segment, which is sort of uh, cut in half there at the top, your mile six by the Pennsylvania Turnpike. <clears throat> um, other than researching the line, we, we did a public uh, outreach campaign to figure out what's the public support. Uh, we kind of had an idea that it would be positive. We had received a tremendous amount of positive support at our public events prior to launching this feasibility study. Um, and our Facebook page uh, has, has garnered a lot of followers, but we wanted to get that hard data. Um, so one of the questions we asked in our public survey was, are you in favor of this trail? And you can see, uh, I guess you could call that overwhelmingly, um, we're in support. Um, and even the ones that said no, um, there, some of the reasons for them saying no were generally oftentimes were sort of misinformation uh, or confusion or fears about eminent domain or other issues that, that uh, high, low, high, high taxes or, or uh, crime, things that, were, that are totally on the table to be discussed and I think um, can, be, can be rectified with, with, with discussion. So I think we can answer those questions. <clears throat> Another question we asked was, uh, do you think this should be part of a much larger trail network? You know, do, do, do you think that this region should have a, a trail system? And you can see there again, uh, overwhelmingly, people, people want that. Uh, they're starving for that. And, and the very first public event we had ever tabled that was uh, the um, National Night Out in Carroll Township at Logan Park. And uh, people came running across from up the park when they had heard we were here and the, they had heard about this idea and, and they were excited for the, for the possibility of not having to drive 45 minutes down to the York Rail Trail or out to Newville to the Cumberland Valley Trail, uh, Rail Trail um, or, or elsewhere in the state, but to have one within a short drive or even a bike or a walk from their house um, was, was really exciting to them and something that they were um, passionate about. And, and, and Northern York and Eastern Cumberland are places that are rapidly expanding. There's lots of housing going on, especially in Northern York. And people are moving here from other places. We found, we met a lot of people that moved here from places that had trail systems, trail access. So when they moved here and there was nothing, they were kind of uh, bummed about it, so. Um, and I just pulled out a few of the uh, quotes, some of the positive quotes um, from, the, um, from the survey as well. Uh, and you can kind of see uh, that people really are making the connections that we were hoping um, that we were going to try to make, but, but they, they're already seeing it. I mean, they, rail trails are not new. Uh, people have experienced them, they like them, they understand them, the business community gets them, um, the, the tourism industry gets them. I mean, it's, 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 it's a no brainer. And so it's really great to, uh, to see people's um, reactions in this way. Um, 
so the next steps for this, uh, we are, we've, the first phase of the feasibility study, we worked with Silver Spring Township, um, and now we're pivoting for the phase 2A, or phase 1B, um, to work with Mechanicsburg Borough um, uh, as the municipal lead. Uh, they have a very energized population there that's excited about this trail. They have a park, assist, uh, park um, and rec uh, staff that's willing to uh, uh, help move this forward and to manage the grants for us um, and with us. And um, uh, they, they also are trying, their downtown um, organization is moving forward with revitalization efforts, again, to try to spark more uh, foot traffic in the downtown, especially now um, in light of the, the pandemic slowdown. Um, and uh, there's been efforts to try to add bikeability and walkability to town. So it just made total sense um, to, to, work, to work with them uh, as well as they were, they were um, able and, and, and willing. So um, <clears throat> we are applying for grants right now to, to finish the next, the next phase. Um, and hopefully if those grants all come in, uh, that we'll start the, the next phase, which will look more at um, where might the possible alignment be, where might trailheads be, who will build, own, manage this. Um, potentially we move forward with creating a, well, we probably most likely move forward with creating a friends organization, some another a group to, to, to officially kind of coalesce a, around this, this idea that we, we now know is publicly popular or supported um, to, to really push this the rest of the way, however many years this may take. Um, and uh, so hopefully um, those, those grant funds won't dry, dry up um, because of some of the economic downturns, but, um, but we'll make do, we'll, we'll make it happen. So everyone's real excited and I'm super thankful for the, the, the partners within the partnership for being willing to, to get excited about this and to bring this to the rest of the partnership to, um, to kind of help be a legitimate um, force to, to get to get me as a citizen in to uh, local public meetings and to, to, to discuss with visitors bureaus. Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been huge. Um, I think my time is up. I could go on for another hour. I've been going on for about six years now. So um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you, Dave. Um, we don't have a question, but we did have um, a comment. This person says, looks like a great project. I can imagine the day when people go from Chambersburg through Shippensburg, Carlisle, then to Mechanicsburg, and then to Dilford. If that, you know, I think you already spoke to that, but um, it seems like there is a lot of enthusiasm for that in this region of, of this being part of that regional trail network. Um, what has, like, when you connect with people who are who are already aware of what a regional trail network is and they're excited about it what do you think is that the motivating factor of them thinking that that's a good idea motivating factor for them um i mean i, I would assume it's their positive experience that they had in other places that had that sort of network or those sort of assets, uh, recreational, uh, historic, um, tourist uh, assets uh, in, in the communities they visited, um, or they lived in those places and they saw the economic benefit or the health benefit. Um, that's something too that, uh, you know, I grew up in, in a town in New Jersey that, that was, a, was a trailhead. We had this, this rail line that became a gas line that then became a trail. Um, and it's hugely popular and I just sort of always took it for granted. It was just always there. And so I grew up in a, in a town that is now really just starting to discover that it is a trail town and it's taking advantage of that. Um, but it also connected a lot of different places back even in those days. Um, and one thing that I've been trying to do, um, even though I'm the cheerleader for this trail, uh, whenever I can be a cheerleader for connecting trails or other re regional trails, whether they're uh, being first thought of or they're in their design and construction plan phase. Um, I'm always trying to either share resources, share ideas, uh, connect those other trails with the people that I've met that have helped me 
um, uh, and to really to not be so siloed in my own trail, but to, to see my to see this trail, um, it's not my trail, but to see this trail as a uh, as just one part of of a, of a better regional trail network um, that can really have a big impact um, in, in in this region. Um, so, and I because I realize. Just like with, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. When's the best time to start a trail 20 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like we got we to gotta get all these trails going now uh, to, get them, to get them all connected later. <laughs> and, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel over and over and over again. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have limited funds and limited resources. So we got we to gotta all pool together here or pull together. Wonderful. Great words. Thank you, Dave. Sure, and I guess I have to stop share. And you can. Did I give the power back to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Thanks. All right, well, um, we didn't have many questions surrounding that last presentation, so I'm going to move directly into um, you know, closing remarks. We did say that we would finish this up by 11 and it is now 11. So very quickly. Um, thank you for joining us. Thanks for being willing to try this in a webinar format. Um, as you can tell, we're still working out some of the kinks. It will be better if we have to do it again in the future. Um, let's hope that is not the case because I really enjoy the face to face and being able to see you all and interact and just you know, seeing you guys do the same. So hopefully we will be together physically soon. Um, but in the meantime, please consider becoming a partner of the South Mountain Partnership by filling out one of our partner support forms. They are available on our website under the Get Involved tab on our homepage. And you can get to our homepage by southmountainpartnership.org. And it's free, it's, it's relatively you know, um, low input on your part. It's simply a way to support the partnership. And if you are interested in joining a committee and getting closer to this work and deepening your impact in the conservation and preservation and recreation world in the South Mountain region, uh, consider you know, talking to me about serving on a committee. If you already know that you're interested in it, send me a letter of interest or, and or your resume, and we can get you looped into our system. And um, yeah, be on the lookout for our next newsletter. We have big news to share. Um, continue sending us your news also. We wanna share your great news. And Jessica will be following up with all of today's participants um, soliciting updates from you and your organizations that then we'll share with all of the participants today. And um, I think as Wade uh, mentioned earlier, we'll be distributing that PowerPoint and links to the, the video and the other videos that were referenced. So thank you all. And I hope that you have a great weekend. Um, enjoy the landscape, get out, um, eat, fresh strawberries as they come into season hike in our parks and um yeah i wish you the best take care <laughs>